Hi everyone, my name is Annie Fairfax from AnnieWearsIt.com and today I'm going to be sharing with you the first part of my admittedly extensive basket bag collection. So one of my most popular blog posts on my uh, website is about basket bags. I think it's 500 basket bags under $100 and it's been viewed more than 200,000 times this year so I figured my audience is pretty interested in basket bags. So I'm going to get started with uh, some of my favorites. So, let's see, I have a whole pile of them. <laughs> this first one is the Cult Gaia Lilith bag. I believe it's in walnut. It's a really beautiful handbag that's inspired by Japan. I believe it's a Japanese picnic baskets. They've actually taken a lot of their inspiration from Japanese picnic baskets. Um, like the Ark bag is a pretty common style that was popularized I think in the 50s and 60s in Japan. So I'm all about it. We went to Japan earlier and I actually saw people who were carrying very similar bags. Um, so you'll see a lot of my bags are kind of inspired by Japan and by that really kind of like countryside, like simple living type um, ideology. Um, so the reason I guess I love bamboo bags is uh, because they're really more sustainable than leather handbags. Um, when it comes to leather, obviously they have to kill a cow and um, they take its hide, they tan it, and those chemicals can sometimes be polluting to the environment as well as the leather workers who are using them. Um, and then that, everything kind of runs off in our rivers and uh, if you've ever been near a leather tannery, it does not smell very nice. So with this, bamboo bags, raffia bags, rattan bags, um, more natural materials, uh, you can just go grow them pretty easily. Um, and then artisans shape them into beautiful creations like this. And um, it really offsets the load of kind of polluting and toxic chemicals that are released by other handbag methods. Plus, there's just something really organic and kind of, I don't know, almost soothing about bags that are made out of materials you can just find out in the environment. So obviously these are all vegan handbags. Um, and I'm a vegetarian. I mean, I guess technically a pescatarian. I occasionally eat sushi. Um, so it does matter to me that I'm not out there like people aren't out there killing cows to make my purses as often. I do own leather handbags and I do own leather shoes and belts and things like that, but I really try to limit how much I buy. And I really try to buy pieces that are quality or secondhand so that way I'm not contributing nearly as much to that sort of thing. Um, and no judgment, I mean, if you are a meat eater, you wear head to toe leather all the time. That I mean, everyone's different, but this is just kind of what I like. So um, this handbag's really cool because it has a really unique, let's see if I can show you, little snap mechanism here. So it folds like that and it doesn't quite fold flat but it does fit really nicely inside of a suitcase. So I typically stuff it with clothing when I travel and then have it resting like this inside my suitcase. Um, the concave structure makes it kind of pretty sturdy and strong. Um, and I don't find that when I'm carrying things inside this that anything falls out really. Uh, it just goes like that and the slats really aren't they're just barely wide enough for me to put a fingertip in there. So like my finger, uh, I mean my cell phone doesn't slip through, my chapstick or lip gloss, my wallet, everything stays in here really nicely. I get a lot of questions about this one when I carry it. People are like, oh, what is that? Where is that from? Where'd you get that? So um, this one is definitely one of my favorites. It's really unique. Uh, I don't know how many ways I could rotate this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Cult Gaia. Lilith handbag. I believe it's in walnut. Don't quote me on that. I'll list all these handbags in the description below so you can check them out uh, and maybe find some new places to shop. I mean, that's one of my favorite things about watching YouTube videos is finding inspiration from other people, seeing what other people do, see what other people like, uh, and then how I can kind of integrate that into my own life. So maybe you might not run out and buy 500 basket bags under $100, but maybe you'll pick up a new favorite handbag like this one. My next handbag is also a Cult Gaia, one of their older styles. I ordered this off of eBay um, from someone who was reselling it and it's really unique. I believe it's all bamboo. Um, so it has like a kind of beaded type thing. It's all wood or bamboo, um, which I guess is a type of wood. Uh, handle, it doesn't come off, it's attached to the bag. And then there's this little flap and inside goes keys, phone, wallet, uh, lip gloss, whatever you want to put in there. It's actually really spacious. My main complaint, and the reason I don't really carry it too often, is when I have any amount of weight in the bag or I'm moving around, the beads roll and they slide off my shoulder. So, I mean, as you can see, 
this is my shoulder maybe it just goes like that so it's really hard and I really have to just hold it up which is pretty annoying and it's not really long enough to be a crossbody I mean it can kind of go like in the front which isn't bad I mean actually it's really cute like this um, but I don't carry it as often as some of my other bags and although I do love it I don't know just kind of something to think about it's cute I mean if I were to carry it like maybe this or in the middle or um, I suppose I could probably tie a scarf around, give it a little extra traction, that'd be fine. I've been honestly thinking of painting this, which, I mean, I don't know what color I'd go with. If you have any recommendations, let me know. But I thought it'd be kind of fun since I have so many bags that are the same color. So, uh, it doesn't seem to be, f well, no, maybe it is finished. It might not be that easy to paint. Never mind. <laughs> Another really interesting handbag. This one is also made from bamboo, but it's sliced a little differently. I actually don't know where I picked this up. Uh, I'll look through my email, see if I can find the receipts from this. But it's all really sturdy wood. Uh, it doesn't bend, it's not flexible, it doesn't collapse, so it's kind of difficult to travel with. However, it is really cute. The bottom is solid. Uh, the sides have little slats, which are too small for me to fit my fingers in, so really nothing will fall out of this, unless, of course, your bag tips. Oops, or you drop it. <laughs> uh, because the top doesn't quite close all the way. However, if you're just out and about, it's a really cute handbag. Looks really beautiful with navy or perhaps like an all-white dress. Uh, it's a nice pop of red. I really like this for summertime, but I think I might actually break this out around like Christmas and the New Year because I think red is a super festive and fun color. And while I don't carry most of these, um, some of them I do use all year round, but a lot of them I just use in the spring and summer and the fall. But this one I think I would actually probably be able to get away with like a nice camel coat as kind of a statement bag in the winter. Just something a little unexpected, a bit different material than you're used to seeing in the cold weather. I don't know if my bag pile is going to collapse. This is from, let's see, it's called Sea and Grass. It's a beautiful handmade bag. I believe it was about $100. Uh, I think maybe $98, don't quote me. Um, and it's made completely from seagrass, which again is renewable, so um, very eco-friendly. Inside is lined with a nice kind of beige tan fabric. Uh, there's two interior pockets, one is zippered, the other is just open, and it's a really great bag to take to the beach, take to the farmer's market, take to a flower shop, or what have you. I actually use this for groceries sometimes, um, so I'll, we'll get like a little baguette from Whole Foods and some vegetables, and it's just every time I go grocery shopping with this, I get, uh, again, a lot of compliments, but also I just want to take a picture of it. There's something so gorgeous about bags made from organic materials like this it just really makes you want to take pictures of it and like have beautiful produce flying out or flowers or baguettes I love this bag it's really sturdy the bottom is well made it's nice and solid you won't have anything fall out of this again unless it tips um, it also would be a great beach bag so that's really multifunctional and super cute this is the handbag that I picked up this summer from st. Armand's designs I think they're out of Florida um, and it's beautiful. It reminds me of my peacock chair, which is what my gigantic plant is currently sitting on. And it's really just kind of a fun purse. If you watched my, or if you saw my blog post about the Lavender Festival, I brought this with me. Um, and it's, it's great. I mean, there's, the bottom of it is, oops, there's lavender falling out of it. <laughs> Ah, so cute. Anyway, the bottom is nice and sealed. The sides do have quite a bit of space right here. Um, so if you're carrying anything small, like a chapstick or whatever, it might fall out. However, for my cell phone, my wallet, which is pretty big, and um, maybe like a pair of sunglasses in here, it definitely works. Uh, I mean, I don't think, I mean, I don't think I've lost anything out of it if I have it and notice. Um, just wouldn't carry any small objects, but this is so pretty. I've never seen another handbag like this, and it's so unique. I love the little swirls. Like I said, it's very, very reminiscent of a peacock chair. Um, so, yeah, it's a beautiful handbag, very unique, and very, hmm, I don't know, it almost, almost has like an art deco feel to it up here, right? I mean, that's pretty cool. <laughs> This net bag is something I picked up in Japan. I mentioned earlier that a lot of these handbags kind of came, I think, the inspiration from Japan. So they're really popular to have net bags like this, things made from bamboo. Obviously bamboo grows pretty rampant there. Uh, so this was just gorgeous. I paid, I think, oh man, 5, uh, 5,000 yen, so about 50 bucks for this. And it's gorgeous. So you take this little leather snap right here and you unhook uh, it and then it just kind of folds like this. So, I mean, you honestly could carry it like this as well, if I can get the handles to go back up, oops. Um, kind of half like this, or if you wanted to close it a little bit more, it folds flat for storage or 
taking on travels on a suitcase. It's just really cute. I mean, you could also, hypothetically, I mean, I don't know how I'd how I'd feel about carrying it like this, but if you wanted to just kind of drop your things in here and have the bag kind of open, like half mask like that, or like over, whatever, that's actually really cute. I might, I don't know. It's the interesting thing about these bags is that they're so versatile. You can do a lot, you can take them a lot of different places, and you can wear them a lot of different ways, which I think is part of the appeal. So, this is one of my favorites. This is so gorgeous. I just, I miss Japan. I really want to go back. Um, it was an incredible trip. We were there for six weeks, and we went to Tokyo, Kyoto, Nara, Himeji, Osaka, um, went to Nagoya, Kurokawa, Kurokawa Onsen. Um, we went all over the place. I mean, it's such an amazing country. You can walk the cities, you can use the public transportation in the cities, which is great. You can go um, easily on the Shinkansen, which are bullet trains, and just travel out into the countryside. And it's, it's just so fun. I mean, my husband speaks really good Japanese, and my Japanese is okay. So if you want to chat with me in Japanese, let's go for it. I need some practice. <laughs> um, but yeah, I saw this style in Japan quite, oops, quite a bit around cherry blossom season when we were there. And every time I see this in my closet, I just get really nostalgic because that was the best trip I've ever been on. And I miss it a lot. So Japanese, beautiful. I love it. <laughs> This handbag I picked up from Anthropology. Oh, actually, I showed my husband this purse um, a couple of months ago, and I was like, oh, this is so cute, and I didn't think anything really about it. I just kind of show him when I like things because I'll be like, oh, that's cool, or that'd go really well with this dress, or whatever. And then, like, a week later, he's like, oh, there's a package for you. And I was like, oh, I don't know what this is from Anthropology. And I opened it up, and he bought me this bag, and it was just so sweet. So it came in like a cobalt blue, a red, and this, and I think they said it was like a bird cage bag, I want to say. Um, but it's made from uh, raffia, I think. Don't quote me on that. I'm not really sure the different names of the materials. I should probably know. I think this is raffia. But it's just beautiful. Again, the swirls and how the patterns kind of come together. And this is also handmade. So this is really good. I mean, you're not going to have anything slide through, really, unless you're being really aggressive with it. But, of course, if it rolls, then it might spill out the side, depending on what's inside. I've never had any problems. It's really cute, really different, really unique, um, very fun for summer. I, I carried this bag a lot this summer actually, so I'll link this in the description below as well. And this bag, I'm sure you've seen all over Instagram. I actually bought this like three years ago. I think that was when they were really starting to become popular. It's made in Bali, handmade. Um, I don't know, I mean, I think everyone and their grandma owns this now, so <laughs> not much to say about it. Mine still sort of smells like barbecue sauce which if you have this bag, you'll know they like smoked it, which is kind of how it got this beautiful color. And it never dissipated. I really did leave this outside like by open windows and stuff. And it just, it doesn't go away. It just smells like an eternal barbecue. So I store it on its own in my closet. It's honestly, you can't smell it unless you like get right up next to it, but the smell's still there. And that kind of bothers me, but it is a cute handbag. Uh, the inside has a beautiful, a green fabric to this and I think this is really fun because it I, this bag was really iconic for a while and I think it's really kind of what jump-started the whole basket bag movement which is why so many different retailers started offering them because they said hey this is really popular they can't keep them in stock um, let's see what else we can do with that so you know it's a classic <laughs> another fun handbag I have from cult Gaia I think it's a cupola cupola Kyopola, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> it's C-U-P-O-L-A. Anywho, if you've ever seen a word written that you don't know how to actually say it, that is like the story of my life. I used to read a lot when I was little and I hadn't heard people say some of the words. So, for instance, I never heard anyone say the word Gemini. So I'd go around saying that my birth, my horoscope or whatever, the constellation I was born under was Gemini. And I was like, oh, when I learned that wasn't how you say it. Ha ah, geez. Anyway, this is really cool. It has a magnetic closure. The inside looks a bit like this. And um, very reminiscent of their ARC bags, just a little bit different. And it has little feet that you can store it. And this bottom is solid wood. So it's really pretty. It's very unique. Um, never seen anything like this either. Actually, for a little while, I had this sitting on my desk open like that. And it had a little vase of flowers that were kind of growing over. And it was so gorgeous. And then I obviously took it out to carry it the other day. Um, yeah, very versatile, very pretty. I like this dark wood. It's really a great transition piece for fall, I think. 
So that's going to be it for part one. I'll do a second part soon. I have a lot of different basket bags. Like I said, I have a really big collection. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe. I've been making more videos more often, and I went back through and I redid all of my channel art. So if you want to go take a peek at that, I also threw together some new playlists, kind of highlighting my favorite videos and my most popular videos and my most popular categories. So if you want to go take a look at those as well, I hope you enjoy them. And I will see you again soon. Thank you so much.